Bienvenue number two, welcome to reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, we're focusing on the African communities in the United States. It's a growing number of people. Many are from French-speaking countries like Cameroon, Senegal, and Tunisia. And in spite of problems that they're facing, still are most convinced that the U.S. is the place where dreams can be realized. Fanny Allah is our reporter. Joining us now, Fanny, racism clearly a factor in this report. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if we can talk about uh, racism, but what's definitely sure is that the relationship between Africans and African-Americans is very complex and often full of stereotypes. Uh, I'd say, in a way, African-Americans envy Africans for knowing who they are and where they come from, because whether they're from Cameroon, as you said, or Ivory Coast or Nigeria, these African immigrants uh, all belong to a country with roots and their own culture. When African-Americans are Americans, the African heritage they have comes from uh, their ancestors who were slaves, and that's uh, what's still hard to process today. Their ancestors were forced to come to the US. Uh, they've been discriminated in different ways for 400 years, and yet they bear the nationality of a country that uh, sometimes still struggle to acknowledge its history. So I'd say there is a complex of uh, identity, but the mistake, in my opinion, would be to believe that Africans and African Americans have more in common just because they share the same skin color. Fanny Ella, thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look then at Fanny's report. It's been almost seven years since I moved here. I wanted a little change, and since it's so different from my country, I thought, why not? Let's see if there's a better life on the other side. Aurora Zondekon came to the U.S. from Benin looking for a better life. At 47, she's now a rideshare driver in Washington, D.C., a job she never envisioned for herself. My father is probably rolling over in his grave, wondering why I paid for all those studies to end up as a cab driver. I didn't have anything. I didn't speak any English before coming here. Back in Benin, she was an executive in a communications firm. Now she drives between 12 and 14 hours a day, 25 rides on average between D.C., Virginia and Maryland. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. That day, she's taking her clients near the U.S. capital. Where are you from? Uh, originally, a tiny country in West Africa called Benin. Have you ever heard about Benin? Yes, I love geography. Oh, wow, well, OK. Next to Congo. Exactly. Like living in D.C.? I don't live in D.C. D.C. is so expensive. I couldn't afford D.C. I live in Maryland. And can I say that I like it? It's hot. Depending on how much she works, Azondecon makes between $1,000 and $1,500 a week. A significant income, but one that barely pays the bills around Washington. She isn't able to save and sometimes has to ask her mother to send money from Benin. It's a lot of money, but with the cost of living here, it's not much. Rent alone is $2,000. Imagine, $2,000 is 1 million CFA francs. That's a palace in Benin. When you're in Africa, you think the U.S. is an El Dorado, but that's not exactly how it is. Not all African immigrants share her disappointment. Every year, thousands leave the African continent for their shot at the American dream. How many cases do you have? Adnan Kebayer is Tunisian, born in Bizert, the northernmost city in Africa. At the age of 24, he decided to try his luck in America. Now 48, he's the manager of the upscale Georgetown Club in Washington. It's like a cruise ship, like the Titanic. In this members-only club, Kebayer is also in charge of selecting wines. That's good, saint million that day, he's doing business with another North African. Are you from Rabat? No, from Agadir. I'm Berber. Berber? Where's <laughs> it? No, Agadir. I go to Virginia to get my chicken tagine. 
I started out as a waiter in L.A. Then I came here. I was bussing tables. Then I became maitre d', sommelier, and general manager. Kibayer eventually chose D.C. because of its relative proximity with North Africa, but also for its diversity. More than 170 countries are represented in the nation's capital. I made the choice of really being an American, because America gave me everything. So why shouldn't I give it back too? It's true. That's the mentality, like President Kennedy said. Don't ask America what can do for you, what you can do for America. So. He has never regretted his choice. He says several of his friends left Tunisia after the revolution to join the jihad. I've got two friends, one neighbor from Bizert, who went to Syria and died there, and another from Marseille, a Tunisian with a French mother. He left his pregnant wife and went to Syria. Bye-bye. He died too. I have nothing in Tunisia. My life is here. As they say, this is the last transit of my life. About 20,000 Africans come to the U.S. every year through the Green Card Lottery, a system created by President Ronald Reagan in the 80s that allows winners to live and work in the U.S. legally. That's how Edwin Guachifozo moved to the U.S. from Cameroon five years ago. When I got in here, I said to myself, this is a new journey. To be eligible, applicants must have completed high school and come from a country with a low immigration rate to the U.S. It took Edwin Guachifozo four attempts to win the lottery. I prepared all that I needed to prepare, and among the documents I had to prepare was some medical tests. Then I was ready for the interview at Yaoundé at the United States Embassy. I was successful. They congratulated me and said, welcome to the USA. The 26-year-old just completed his degree in IT from the University of Maryland, which he hopes will open new doors. I am very proud of what I have achieved so far, and it's thanks to the USA as well, which who made it possible for me to achieve all that I am capable of achieving. I played my part, they played their part, and I'm so grateful. again in Silver Spring, Maryland. She's treating herself to a few hours of pampering to get her hair braided at a friend's salon. How are you? How's the family doing this morning? Okay, okay. What about you? I'm fine. The two women met seven years ago when Nazondecon moved to the US. Back then, they both worked in the same hair salon. Their friendship was built on a common language and shared West African roots. Yes, Africa is a continent, but it's also like a country, especially French-speaking Africa. We have the same culture, we understand each other, we eat basically the same meals, we think the same, we have the same experiences, which is not the case with African Americans, for example. Relationships between African Americans and African immigrants aren't always easy. In her seven years in the U.S., Azondecon has yet to build a friendship with an African American. Sometimes they think their ancestors were sold by ours. So there is some jealousy. There's also jealousy because when we come here, we know where we came. We fight, which isn't always the case for them. I worked with them for a long time. You just have to know your place and take what you can. As only con's judgment is harsher fueled by her past encounters. They might come up to you, and then the next day, they're a different person. For them, friendship is superficial. Whereas for me as an African, friendship is sacred. Integrating in the US and adopting its codes can pay off. Kebayer, the Tunisian, did just that. 
He's now been married for 22 years to Rachel, a Virginia native. He sees his family as a big part of his successful American dream. America gave me freedom, happiness, everything. It gave me a family. I didn't think I'd have a blonde with me. Yeah. <laughs> that was also my dream, having a blonde. <laughs> Kebaya's French is a little rusty at times, a sign that after 24 years in the U.S., the Tunisian has become very American, if not completely. I think he's kept some of his Tunisian values, especially in the way he guides me. I haven't had the same lifestyle as my friends who are fully American. Maybe he's a bit more straight. In the land of immigrants, most people can trace their roots abroad. Rachel's family, for example, came from Germany in the early 1900s in search of a better life, like so many others. Yeah, he pursued a very productive life in this country. So I guess, I mean, it's just all part of the melting pot and the melange of people. So I think this is just a continuation of the dream. Yeah. Edwin Guachifoso is also working to make his American dream a reality. Even though I can't say this place is perfect, like the system is perfect, but I can say somehow the, fifth, the system is favorable compared to that of Cameroon. Like there's some, some certain level of fairness. While he's looking for a job in line with his degree, the young man DJs at various events in the area, a passion through which he can express his African roots. I'm going to play a lot of Makosa. That's Cameroon music and uh, some Afrobeat, Ninja, and uh, some, uh, some South African music as well. With the money he's made in the US, he's been able to buy a brand new turntable. My new baby. <laughs> I call it my baby <laughs> because I love this so much. <laughs> The DJ hasn't been back to Cameroon since moving to the U.S. five years ago. A hard decision, but one that he doesn't regret. Anything I wish to do, I can achieve it right here. So that's why it's worth it. It's even more than worth it. Missing all of those people, missing my family, my friends, the food. For others, being homesick is much harder. As Andrecon is doing all of this for her daughter, Sasha, who's been going to school here since she was five years old. I feel more comfortable in English because when I came here, I forgot all my French. <laughs> As Andrecon initially came to the U.S. on a tourist visa, hoping to stay a few months and leave her daughter there. But her personal situation changed. What's new on your end? I'm OK. How about you? I'm hanging on as usual. At home, she still cooks traditional meals. My African food, I can't live without it. She has passed on her love of Benin to her daughter, who's growing up between two cultures. I feel African when I'm with my family, but when I'm at school and with my friends, I feel American. Sasha is hoping to go to Yale after high school a way of completing her mother's American dream. The American dream is possible when you come here young. But for 90% of those who've immigrated to the US, the American dream is just an illusion. Illusion or not, the American dream is still a powerful attraction. Making it a reality requires time and sacrifice. Our reporter Fanny Ella is still with us. Fanny, thank you so much for, for that report. Many, many migrants get into the US via what's referred to as the kind of lottery system. Please tell us how this works. Visa lottery.
Well, the green card lottery, which real name is uh, diversity visa, is given to uh, 55,000 people uh, each year from uh, eligible countries in Africa, Asia, Europe and the Middle East. There is less people uh, from South America because to obtain this diversity visa, you have to come from a country which has a low immigration rate uh, in the US. The required conditions are uh, to have a high school diploma or at least two years of professional experience and a valid passport. There are uh, a lot of participants for a few winners, though. Last year, to give you an example, there were 7 million people uh, participating. And to be se selected doesn't mean uh, you'll get the green card. You have to fill a lot of uh, administrative documents and to get an interview at your local embassy. But once you win, like Edwin, we've seen in the report, you can leave work and study in the US and you can even bring your family with you. And after five years, you can apply for citizenship in the US. And for the United States, it's actually a, a good way to uh, choose its immigration and uh, control it as well. Fanny, why is the African community so fast growing in the US? Well, it's, um, it's difficult to answer this question. Uh, in, indeed, Africans represent 5% of immigrants in the US, but their population is, uh, is the one that grows the most. They were 4.6 million in 2019, and uh, this number is projected to double by 2060, uh, according to the American uh, Census Institute. It's hard to... Um, to know why, but there, there uh, was definitely an increase after 1980 and the Refugee Act, which uh, allowed uh, a lot of people uh, from uh, countries uh, where there was a conflict happening, like Ethiopia, Sudan or Congo, to come to the US. And the second increase came after 1990 and the installation of the green card lottery we talked about. So this uh, diversity visa allowed a lot of people from uh, sub-Saharan countries to come to the US uh, until today, actually. Fanny, thank you very much indeed. Fanny Alla, our reporter this week. Uh, see Fanny's report again, of course, via our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us. Most of all, do stay safe.